began his career in 1970 as a union member and as an elected chief steward. That was in 1972. Elected president in 1974, Al Garrett hasn't looked back. His purpose is to serve AFSCME membership. AFSCME is the nation's largest and fastest growing public services employees union with more than 1.6 million active and retired members. AFSCME's members provide the vital services that make America happen. They are nurses, corrections officers, child care providers, EMTs, sanitation workers, and much more. With members in hundreds of different occupations, AFSCME advocates, advocates for fairness in the workplace, excellence in public service, and prosperity and opportunity for all working families. AFSCME is a union comprised of a diverse group of people who share a common commitment to public service. For them, serving the public is not just a job, it is indeed a calling. You can say that about Al Garrett. Serving his union and the public isn't a job with him. It is indeed a calling. If you've ever heard him speak, the passion that he has for people and the issues affecting the community leave you without any doubt about his toughness, his compassion, his commitment to, problems, to solving problems and making life better for his members, the city, and the community in which he lives. Al Garrett is an advocate for prosperity and opportunity for all of America's working families. He stands for fairness at the bargaining table, in our communities, and in the halls of government. He is in the thick of a battle against right to work and the emergency manager, a battle he will fight with the eye of the tiger. Our honoree for the labor award for his dedication to the struggle for working families everywhere. Mr. Allen.
Can you imagine that? So even where there weren't blacks being deprived, there were people who understood that justice denied anywhere is the justice denied to everybody. And so they stood up with us. And then, so we won that. We put it on the ballot and they voted for it. But we've allowed people to get elected in this state that are so indifferent to the cause of freedom that they, but if they do, they passed a new law. And then they got together, and I'm gonna get through this quick, they got together and conjured up a crisis in the city of Detroit. Now that's not to say that the city of Detroit doesn't have financial difficulties, because it does. They conjured up this whole thing called, tell them, Joe, <laughs> and if we can step back, understand, part of this is all a game. Let, let, me, let me give you what I'm talking about. Remember when they first came into the city, the argument wasn't about legacy costs. It was about a deficit in that budget. Budgets have a duration of 12 months. They got in and all of a sudden it wasn't a deficit in the budget, it was the legacy costs. All right? And then they brought in this emergency manager. And he says, it's the legacy costs. Now what we find out where experts have looked at the city's books and it was published by Morningstar in the Wall Street Journal, yeah. the three most successful pension, public pensions in the United States is Detroit, Washington, D.C., and San Antonio, Texas. But yet we're in bankruptcy because of legacy costs. The intentions to take over the city of Detroit existed long before anybody looked at legacy costs. And so, in my effort to represent my members and to represent my community, I live in Detroit. Don't want to go nowhere else, ain't going nowhere else, unless Jackie makes me. Uh, <laughs> it's actually fighting for we can have a say that, that, that we matter, our children matter, and if we roll over, if we roll over and walk away, then what Martin did in the 60s, don't matter. What our speaker did, don't matter. Because it says at any given time, the soldiers in the war can be taken. And I'm asking you not to be taken. And with that comes a commercial. December the 3rd, 9 o'clock, federal courthouse on Lafayette. We don't know what the judge is going to say. But we ought to at least be there to say, hey, justice ought to rain from these courthouses. Mm -hmm. That it ought not be about what big money wants, ought not be about what the powerful want. A commitment was made to those workers. Yeah. Right. And that commitment ought to be honored. Yes. And so we're going to be on the court steps, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to give the judge a little courage. Okay. Because sometimes it requires courage. It do. Because some of our judges, yeah. how are you, judge, uh, are without courage. Right. We're going to help this judge stand up. He needs you there mm -hmm. on December the 3rd, standing on the step, asking him to do the right thing. All right. Rule in behalf of the workers of the city of Detroit and on behalf of anybody who's made a commitment to honor their commitment. Thank you very much. All right.